Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out Band of Brothers episode 9. I imagine we're getting into some pretty darker stuff because as this is um, Easy Company's final stretch and they are moving into Germany, the center of German operations, I do imagine we're going to get into some uh, Holocaust type stuff, perhaps some liberations of concentration camps and that sort of thing. So I am bracing myself for that. I am going to have a bit more of a serious tone for this because, you know, it's not really appropriate to be going, oh, Dan, that's crazy. I can't believe this when when the subject matter might be a bit more um, sensitive, of course. And also, as uh, I am a person of the LGBT community, this is going to be a bit more personal for me as, um, you know, the people that came before me in this LGBT community were uh, murdered and slaughtered by the thousands by the Nazi regime. So this is a story that is close to my heart. And um, I didn't really realize that actually until quite recently because um, obviously the mass target of the uh, Nazi solution was uh, Jewish people. And um, rightfully so, that is uh, the prominent story of the Holocaust. But um, it's often forgotten that there are also the uh, Romani people, for example, that were also persecuted by the Nazis. And also, I, I was doing some research and I never really processed that fact that um, if I was around back in uh, the era of the Nazi uh, rule, then I would likely have been killed in a concentration camp. That is so insane to think about. But um, really, I had never even thought about that until just recently. I was doing some research on the Yellow Triangle and how that... Um, has become a symbol for uh, gay and queer empowerment nowadays. So I think that's really interesting. So I've just been really thinking about that a lot as we get closer to that sort of subject matter that I assume will be covered in the show unless they're just gonna talk about more armed conflict or personal stories, that's fine with me, but just something worth noting. Another personal story here, I don't know if I mentioned in the last video and if I did, I'll probably edit this out, but my grandmother told me that she was actually a survivor of the Cardiff Blitz bombing raids in Cardiff, Wales, and that uh, her neighborhood and towns would just get destroyed by bombs and she would have to walk to school or the store the next day. So I'd never heard that before, but that is really rather interesting. Also, I did not know that uh, there is a third series being produced by Hanks and Spielberg called Masters of the Air based on the book of the same title, which I think I'm going to read now that I'm going through this sort of World War II phase. So that's very exciting. And uh, I can't wait to get into this and experience uh, the final uh, climax of Band of Brothers and experience the end of this journey. And uh, it's been really great to go on this guys with you as we get to the closer end. I just wanna say it really means a lot to me how much you guys have stuck with me through this channel. And we had a lot of ups and downs, a lot of technical difficulties, which the patrons will know about. But um, we've had a lot of uh, copyright strike videos getting taken down. But you guys have always supported me and been very nice. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really great to get to know you guys and interact with you guys in the comments. And now that I'm done this series, I'm excited to go back through the comments and not have to worry about spoilers and interact with you guys and read every single comment and get back to you guys. So. Really, thank you guys so much. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is the only good crowd is a dead one. Well, but there was something in there that, you know, hey, there was a kid. Most of them were kids. We all were kids. Yep. We thought that the Germans were probably the evilest people in the world. As the war went along, we found out also that it wasn't the Germans per se. I've thought about this often. That man and I might have been good friends. We might, we might have had a lot in common. You never know, you know. Of course, they were doing what they were supposed to do, and I was trying to do what I was supposed to do. Under different circumstances, we might have been good friends. I believe I said those exact words in episode three. I said, um, it's such a shame that the war has taken these two guys apart, that prisoner of war and also um, malarkey. When they had that conversation, I said, um, I really think that it's such a shame that this is just some kid who him and Malarkey clearly would have been friends had the circumstances been different because after all, a lot of the Germans were not the evil Nazi that we have in our heads. Um, and by no means am I excusing Nazi ideologies, not at all. But I'm saying the German ground forces who are conscripted to fight for the army a lot of them did not even care for political ideals. A lot of them didn't have any political ideals. They were just there because they had to be. So, um, you know, a few people in the comments got really upset with me that I was defending that prisoner of war. But, I mean, these guys are veterans. They were actually there. And the very first lines of this episode is saying that a lot of them were just kids. And, I mean, 
that's just kind of the point I was trying to make. And I guess some people in the comments weren't too happy that I said that, but I, I stand by it. I think, um, and that was part of the, one of the issues I had with Saving Private Ryan that I, one of the few cons I had is that I felt, um, and also I'm not talking during the show, by the way, just the opening titles rolling. So if, uh, you guys are watching, so why is he talking so much during the show? But, um, yeah, and Saving Private Ryan, they really made the Germans look like, uh, cowards or these like vicious killers. And they all had like these shaved heads to look so like, uh, they, they just made them look so much like the enemy. And if we can take that moment where the Germans were singing Silent Night on the Christmas episode that we just watched, there's nothing like that in Saving Private Ryan. But then again, that's not what that film's about. It's not what it's trying to be. So totally fine. But that scene of the Germans singing Silent Night was a beautiful way to humanize them without going over the top with it, without trying to make us sympathize with them or anything. It was a great way to just connect them with a human moment without using any sort of other tactics, without breaking the scene or going to their perspective it was phenomenal. That was a perfect scene. And I'm glad they're touching on this again. I think it's important that we know these things. God. Greatest use of a fade I've ever seen in my life. Holy, that might be one of the most effective opening scenes I've ever seen. That was incredible. A single shot moving on a crane up to a second level. On a filmmaking level and an emotional level. That was flawless. That looks like it. Sir. Where's my stuff? I, I thought I'd leave it over there, sir. That is Tom Hardy looking thinner than ever. He's a boy. He's a young, young boy. Wow. That was. What a cameo. Combat, Must be nice to these men to have an actual bed. Someone who's never fired his weapon in combat, huh? Wow. Really? You've never? Nope. Not even with all the action we've seen? Not around. By all means, keep pressing him about it. How'd it go? This morning. It was great. What is rubbing this guy the wrong way? The rest of the boys? Oh, well, they blew up over Germany somewhere. And I Boy. guess that would be it. Man. You know, the real tragedy is they also lost their CO, so... Guess who gets to write all the letters home? Oh, man. Tough gig for this guy. Sink is transferring you back down to Battalion S3. Because you've been demoted. Yeah, demoted, got you. This guy's just so done with it. Our sons died as heroes. You really still believe that? Yeah. You know, I think any contribution of how big or small, I mean, an army is a million little smaller functioning cogs in one larger machine. So I think no matter how big or small your contribution is, you're still worthy of accolade and hero status. I'm sure that you all be happy to know Oklahoma's still playing on Broadway. <laughs> oh, Oklahoma, where no way Oh, what a beautiful morning. That's Michael Fassbender, too. We've got Tom Hardy and Michael Fassbender. <laughs> oh, this replacement, what a guy. Relax, would you? I'm trying to read. Patrick O'Keefe, my friends call me Patty. This guy's got a great charm to him, this character. I really like him, which means he'll probably die. Shut up. Told you it's O'Keefe. This guy's standing his ground a bit. They're all piss and vinegar. Where the crowd's at. Let me at him. Two days later, there they are. With their blood and guts hanging out. And they're screaming for a medic. Mm -hmm. Begging for their goddamn mother. So quit asking about when you're gonna see some action, will you? He was gonna apologize for a second there too. Man, what a great scene. 
that was a really great scene wow that was great because yeah it's, it's perfect about the attitudes so many guys have and then they the second they get into war it's not all it's chopped up to be president's they think dead. they're gonna be oh president's dead right. like the president of the united states of america What the heck is this guy doing? Uh, oh, this is bad. 300,000 crowds just surrendered. 300. Yeah. Tom Hardy's a man of a million voices, million personas. That, like that is one of the chameleon actors of our generation. Guy can play any role. Cats is divorcing me. What? Oh, God. this poor guy, man. I, I feel so terrible for him. Taking the house, I'm taking the kid, she's taking the dog. It's my dog! She's taking my dog! Oh man. Let's go! Run it up! Come on! Dude, I feel terrible for this guy. He's clearly struggling with some alcoholism problems right now. He's got family troubles at home. And he's at the end of his rope with the war. And then we got Sergeant Randleman kicking ass yet again. Look at that landscape. There's that combat medic. I really love him. He's also unbelievably stunning looking. This might be a perfect show. It really might be a perfect show. Like every line just crafts a perfect picture of a character. All the little leave gods. Literature. Get out of here. Great field. Dick Tracy, Flash Gordon mostly. Nice. This is a great little moment. Do they just take these homes to uh, somewhere to stay out for the night or what? Oh, I can just tell this is going to be an unbelievable reveal shot. And it somehow quadrupled my expectations. Wow, what is this? Are those all the men who surrendered? I've got... I, I can humanize the ground soldiers and the men, but those upper guys with those uniforms, there's just something so haunting about those men. This episode has been like next level so far and nothing much has happened. Just a, lot, a bunch of character development, but event wise, we've just been kind of following along. Oh, yeah, that replacement's going to learn very fast that it's not all by the book here. He is right, fellas. You never know when that snipe is going to come. Randleman, be safe. Oh, God, I feel like... My heart is pounding, man. Hey, Frank, what is it? I don't know, sir. My heart is beating out of my chest right now. This is so well done because we know what's coming, but. Oh my god. Okay, Sarge. What the hell you should. Give us some room here. Stand back. Give the kid a break, boy. Oh, that one man needs to be held up for support. Major needs you up front right now. Sure. Here, give them water and any spare rations you might have. Grab me some blankets, quick.
Oh, he must Musician, Schreiber, Schneider, farmers, intellectuals, I mean, normal people. Juden, Juden, tötet. Some of them were killed. Tötet Jews. Die, 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 die Wachen hatten nicht genug. They didn't have enough. Stop giving these men food right now. They're starving. We give them too much to eat too quickly, they'll eat themselves to death. You want us to lock these people back up? Man, that is probably one of the most unfortunate, you know, circumstances you ever could fucking have to do. Fuck, man, I've got nothing to say. I've got nothing to say. This. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can only imagine how fucking uh, hard that would be for him. Because, I mean, just earlier he was talking about he wants to find himself, you know, a, a Jewish wife and a, a family and all that. So, only to see that must be... Uh, I feel like he's heading back for that house where that woman was. Hitler's dead. Holy shit. Shot himself in Berlin. They made the uh, right choice not to go with the usual, uh, the usual uh, theme song that they go with for the end credits. So uh, I think the only thing I can do is uh, talk about this from a uh, filmmaking and cinematic standpoint. Um, obviously, the episode was um, probably the most effective episode they've done. I think because of the content matter, you can uh, you can expect that with this episode. Whereas other episodes were, you know, armed uh, violence against opposing sides. They were. Um, fighting each other and there was some uh uh call for you know they had a brothership that uh, kept them together and they were making like uh they could make jokes and stuff like that with each other and so i think as audience members we're allowed to be a bit more excited about it and uh and get kind of uh in the spirit of uh the camaraderie that the the band of brothers have but in this episode it's just um all that gets stripped away like immediately and I, it just came out of nowhere and the way they did it was really really effective because i think uh uh they made the interesting and appropriate choice i think to 
not show us the uh, pile of the victims at the first reveal because we as audience members know it's coming, but I think when they show us just the reaction to the soldiers, we let that kind of wash over us and hit us, and it gives us almost a chance to attempt to prepare. And then we see um, uh, the Italian member of Easy Company, I don't remember his name, but um, going back to the base. And then come comes back with uh, um, Winters. And then when they get there, uh, the music was impeccable. And um, the music was just incredible. And it was so ominous and just immediately establishes the tone. And I think uh, the shots were, I, I could handle it, I think, emotionally. It was, obviously, it was upsetting, but... When uh, that man was, he came out carrying that uh, body that was just like shriveled. That was just like the breaking point for me, and I, uh, I just couldn't believe it, man. It's uh, it's hard because it, it's, it's unbelievable. It's literally unbelievable. This actually happened, and this is a, uh, a real uh, era in the human time. But um, man, I think uh, uh, just uh, thinking about. When he says, uh, who, who is in this camp? Is it like criminals or what? Like who, who is here? And he says, uh, farmers, musicians, artists, just everyone's here. Like just from different walks of life and every, uh, and just, just Jewish people, no matter what they're from or what their entire background or history, that's, that's who's here. They, uh, are not there for any other reason than uh, who they are and who they were just born as and they have no control over that or anything and uh i think also at the beginning of the episode i mentioned um my uh i've considered uh my own community's history in in relation to uh world war ii events and stuff like that with uh the gay and lesbian uh, lgbtq community in general and how um uh they they went through all of that as well so it's just uh really uh personal and scary to think about now from my perspective ever since i kind of realized that the other day but uh man and i i've seen uh saving private or not saving private, uh, schindler's list and i've seen uh life is beautiful life is beautiful is probably one of my favorite films of all time but uh um I think nowadays, I saw those when I was like 16, 17, and I'm 20 years old now, and I think I'm a lot more uh, kind of uh, in tune with my emotions, perhaps, and I have a, a, I've always had empathy, but I think nowadays I really can connect with things on an emotional level and kind of get in that headspace, and uh, so I think that's why it hit me so much harder this time, because like, obviously Schindler's List is about uh, the worst of the worst, about as bad as it gets in terms of imagery and stuff, but I think... Uh, we're kind of prepared for that when going into Schindler's List. So I didn't have this kind of reaction when I watched that. But watching this, just the way they set it up and the way uh, the music was, and plus Schindler's List was kind of... Uh, we kind of put a barrier between uh, ourselves and that film because uh, it uses a black and white filter. And we uh, it just looks more cinematic. Where this, this film has always gone above and beyond to make it look gritty and real and um really bring out the grit and detail of things so in the, in the war scenes we get for example it's very high contrast low saturation so it brings out the dirt and grit and grime in the war scenes but then uh when we see that same filter and color applied to actual uh victims of, of the holocaust in these camps and stuff it just uh presents the visual imagery in it a way i've never seen it before and uh, this holds nothing back because i think it's uh almost insulting when holocaust films are made and they uh aren't willing to show the true graphicness of it and how uh terrible it was and it's almost like a censored version because when we look back on that from nowadays perspective a lot of people who uh, might be watching films that cover that source or that subject material uh they um aren't seeing it for really how terrifying and truly horrifying it was but uh i think this is the uh, uh best isn't the right word but i think this is the most true to representation that they could do and uh that scene with leap got at the end too that was just uh a lot that was really good because uh 
he talks about his wife that he wants to have and the family he wants to have and just six million people from his uh ethnic and uh religious background that are never going to get that opportunity but uh but uh he will i hope i hope he uh lives and makes it out of here but um man this is a great episode guys and uh thank you so much for uh joining me and uh I didn't really have a lot to say this episode, obviously, because there's not much to discuss. This is an episode to sit and watch and take in and experience. But uh, thank you guys so much for uh, joining me on this episode and on this whole ride. And I really um, I'm bracing myself to finish the next one. I'm going to do it right after I press cut here and jump right into it. So I don't know. If, if that was going to be our one coverage of the Holocaust or if we have more to get into. Because holy fuck, I don't know how I'm going to handle that. But uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. And uh, thank you to the following patrons for supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, thanks.